with Tracy in LA. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my podcast, Dance Journey. Today, we have a very special guest. I mean, all of my guests are special, but (laughs) (laughs) today we have another dance teacher, Zach Pinto, who I'm very excited to interview. Um, I take Zach's class on Tuesday Mm -hmm. night. It's kind of late. It's at 8. 20. 20. Yeah. <laughs> it's a weird time. So it's 820. Um, love his class. He teaches Thank jazz you. two weeks in a row and contemporary two weeks in a row. Yep. What is this coming Tuesday, which doesn't apply because this is going to air later. This <laughs> this week's is a new contemporary combo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Week We're excited. one. Week yeah. one. We love Zach's class. It's right after Melissa's. And if you do both of them, Melissa's pretty intense. So by the time I get to Zach's, I feel kind of relieved that I accomplished Melissa's. So sometimes I'm a little like sillier in Zach's because I'm just like, (laughs) oh, the stress is gone. Like I I did Melissa's combo. And then Zach's combo is also hard. But for some reason, his class is like a little more chill. I don't know why. It's late. I try to keep it chill other than the squats. The warm up's probably tougher than most. (laughs) Actually, yeah. A lot of people that take Melissa's class first kind of seem to hang out in the lobby a little. Don't come for the full warm up. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Zach's all doing like a a really intense warm up to make us warm. And we're like, Zach, we, half of us are already warm. Yeah, but the (laughs) other half are important too. (laughs) I know. Zach cares about the people that just come to his class, but we think he should care about everyone that just took class, including himself usually. Yeah. Um, But yeah, his warm up is good. A lot of jumping jacks, a lot of squats, a lot of cardio. Yeah. Yeah. It does get us really in shape. Yeah. So that's that's good. I'm never mad about it. Good. In the 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 moment, moment. I'm like a little mad. I'm mad at about it too sometimes <laughs> i'm like why doing. do i do this to myself but it's okay <laughs> i don't know how you do it and like talk about it yeah. while you're doing it yeah <laughs> um but, but yeah and then his combos are always like a lot of fun they're challenging i used to think his class was super 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 hard and now <laughs> it's just like super hard it's like okay one super. just super hard <laughs> he never just does like a regular turn he never just does like where's the fun in that a single i gotta challenge you pirouette or just like a regular attitude turn it's there's like, a regular attitude no actually that's a lie i lied <laughs> <laughs> i lied no it's always like an attitude turn into a double pirouette or into some weird jump and like other kind of turn and that yeah. i've never done before and that's accurate yeah but usually in the across the floor he has his practice at first mm-hmm. and i'm usually a mess once in a while i'm not no. <laughs> but then by the time we get to the combo it's like okay i've seen this before yeah and usually, for some reason, it's, like, a little bit easier to do it in the combo than yeah. across the floor. I don't in know the, why. Well, I think, one, it's the exposure. And then, two, it's just, you're, it's like, in the moment, right? It's just fluid, like, out of the choreography already. Yeah. Right? Where the other time, it's like, oh, I am just going across the floor and here next time. You know, yeah. something like that. So. And maybe you're, like, focusing more on the technique in the across the floor, whereas yeah. when the music's going and you're, like... Just let it all go. No more technique. Feels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> Yeah, not what we want to do, but maybe what we do sometimes. Um, so anyway, love Zach's class. I come almost every week and the, every week and the times that I don't come, it's I have a lot of FOMO and mm-hmm. I think I get chastised too. <laughs> no, no, you always give me a good heads up. You're like, hey, I won't be there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but I always do like to get the round one and round two because round two I'm usually like a lot better. Um, so anyway, that's Zach's class, but tonight we're actually going to Christian's class, which we've talked about yeah. a lot on this podcast because I just absolutely love it. Christian's contemporary class on Mondays. His class is also like sort of hard, but his, his choreo is like shorter usually. Yeah, it's shorter, but it really challenges me. It's not a style. So, I mean, I've been doing Christian's class for like six years now. Wow, okay. Since 2018, I think, is the first Christian class I took. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always been challenging for me. Like, I, I feel like with uh, Melissa's choreography, it's it's a little bit more like how I grew up dancing or aligned to mine a little bit. Like, And then Christian's is challenging. And so that's why I love coming to take it because it's just so different. And it just, I feel like I'm a very controlled dancer in, in this class. It needs to be just like release. Interesting. Right? Like just don't even like think about it just okay. move okay like that i don't know that makes sense that makes sense in my mind but it's interesting a- that you say that because i recently interviewed christian and he said that the way he picks up choreo i can't remember if he said it on the podcast or just to me personally before the podcast but <laughs> <laughs> he said something about how he has to not think about it in order to he has to like let his brain go or like i forget the words he used but he has to not think about it kind of like what you're to saying, pick it up to pick it up oh yeah so i mean i'm like my mind is like going i'm very much like a, a visual learner so like i don't need to actually be 
doing it to get it. I just need to watch someone. Okay. But with him, like, I'm doing that, and then as soon as I have it, I just have to, like, Then you want to let it go. Yeah. Okay. He says he lets his brain go in order to pick it up better, which yeah. I was like, that is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have to focus so hard. <laughs> um, But that's interesting, because I would never know that you have, that it was challenging for you. <laughs> that's very nice. you always get it really well. <laughs> Thank you. But um, he does have some, like, quick movements and things. I'm it's getting, very intricate. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting a little more used to it. But it's always, like... He teaches it, and I'm like, oh, it's not that hard. And then he puts the music on, and it's so fast. Mm -hmm. And in order, he does it so flowy, right. even though it's so fast. Right. But it's just, like, the smallest movements, though. It's, like, finger, finger. And then, like, I don't know, just quick little movements yeah. that, yeah, they, in theory, should not be that hard. Yeah. But then you put it with the music, trying to remember all the other choreography, and you're like, oh, Okay, that's a lot more jumping yeah, than I yeah. thought. Yeah, I'm like, I got this. He puts on the music. I'm like, what? Yeah. And then the musicality is just, yeah, it gets a little tricky. But anyways, we're actually going to talk more about Christian's class afterwards because if you know how it works, we take a class, we talk about it afterwards when we're all sweaty. So it's like really real and fresh in our minds of what yeah. we thought about it. So Zach agreed to do that. So we're going to do that later. Um, But let's talk about Zach. We want to hear his dance journey. But what's your current dance life look like what when do you do dance during the week what does it consist of yeah honestly it's not as much as i would like unfortunately um typically it's christians on mondays and then melissa's and then mine mm -hmm. the one that i teach mm -hmm. um and that's the most consistent i used to be pretty consistent with um thursdays when they had mike peel hip-hop fit here yeah i loved that class and then it left um and I haven't gone to take it at its new location, but I loved that class. I would love to add more. Um, occasionally, I will get to the uh, across the floor class on Saturdays from Lily. Oh, yeah. Um, but that's been a while as well. So honestly, I'd say these, my class and then Melissa and Christian are probably the two most common right now. Okay. Um, and that's pretty consistent. Um, sometimes I'll try and take Melissa at some other studio, like when she's at Millennium or something like that. But again, it hasn't been um, exactly what I want. But I've also been doing a lot of like other things, like training for a half marathon right now. Whoa. And so, you know, got to balance out the exercise and the workout. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Wait, okay. So, I mean, that is still a good amount of dance. I mean, yeah. teaching your own and yeah. then doing two other classes a week. For sure. Plus what? So you're training for a half marathon, you said? Mm -hmm. yeah. And do you... How do you... Do you just run to train for that? Yeah. Or do you do other well, types of things? So I'm doing... Uh, so. Dance is like a cross training. I'm running a lot. Um, and then I'm also, I started taking classes at a gym called Training Mate. Have okay. you heard of it? No. It's like a high intensity interval training, you know, like hit training. Um, I'm sure it's similar to an F45 or like a base camp or anything like that, which I've never done before, but a training camp just, uh, or no, a training mate just opened up in Culver City and I had a lot of friends start taking it. And so I'm doing that and oh, it's cool. kicking my butt. But oh it's, it's great. I love it. I need it. It's good cross training as well for the running. It like really is getting my endurance and cardio up. Um, so I'm trying out like it used to be my only workout was like dance. And then I added in running. And now I'm trying to get in some weights. I'm trying to be a little bit. I'm on a fitness journey right now, okay, too. So nice. dance journey and fitness journey. <laughs> but um, yeah, so trying to balance it all right now. But ideally would have a little bit more dance. Yeah. I mean, I think doing a fitness journey at the same time as a dance journey helps your dance journey a lot. At least it used to help mine when I actually had time. Yeah. I don't know how I don't have time for it right now because <laughs> I should. <laughs> but I used to actually do like regular workouts every day. Yeah. And it did help my dancing. But yeah. not, then I just started dancing all the time. It was like. You I do dance a lot. Time. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and you have a regular job, right? I do. A well, I have a job. few Job. I have a full time job. Okay. I'm in healthcare. I'm okay. an occupational therapist, but right now I'm working in patient experience and clinician like development. So I'm basically working with doctors to um, kind of make sure that they're treating their patients well, you know? So okay. working on, I guess you could label it as bedside manner, but really it's, uh, you know, just their patient interaction. So are we treating patients? as people and not just like a number on the schedule for that day. Oh, right. That. So yeah. making that meaningful. And then I also recently, um, started working as a professor at a, uh, university. So I'm teaching uh, grad school occupational therapy students. Oh, nice. Um, just one class a week for right now. It's just a semester and we'll see if it continues, but, um, yeah, focusing on professional development and educational theory principles and okay. things like that. Like 
tomorrow's lecture is emotional intelligence. So, um, nice. yeah, it's fun. So definitely keeping myself busy. And I was going to say, like, do you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I try. I try. I'm like running, dancing, working out. Yeah. Kind of three different jobs. Yeah. That all of those jobs sound really cool, though. Yeah, so. yeah, they're they're fun. It's keeping me busy. Though, yeah, for sure. Your life seems really full and purposeful. It is very is full great. and purposeful. I don't know if you can fit another dance class right now, but <laughs> we'll see. Maybe. If there's a will, there's a way. Um, but okay, so some of that stuff I already knew, but I don't really know. Like, I think the only thing I ever heard you talk about with your past was like that you used to take a lot of ballet, and I feel like I you don't a have bit. a lot of interest in ballet currently well honestly i would love to take another one but again I, there's there's a lot going on yeah in my life but yeah. i would love to take one you know really? so yeah i mean it was ballet was a big thing and it like and that was mainly i guess in my uh high school years where i was only doing ballet okay so it was like freshman and sophomore year of high school was mm, mainly sophomore year i guess but end of freshman year it was just like i don't know 20 hours a week, maybe 30 hours a week of just ballet. Like, it was just a lot of ballet. That sounds amazing. It was amazing (laughs) then. It was amazing then. For a high schooler, I got a little burnt out. Um, I started focusing on school a bit more. Um, But, yeah, it was amazing. I really thought, like, sophomore year of high school, I was like, I'm going to be a professional ballet dancer. Like, that is what I thought I was going to do. Wow. And then I was like, "Uh, maybe not. Let Let me see what I can do in school and do all that. And so... I did not become a professional ballet dancer. Was there, like, a specific reason you started thinking about other options? Or you were just kind of brainstorming? And I just, I think, like, I don't know. Like, uh, I think dance had just been such a big part of my life from um, ages, like, 6 to 15 that I, like, really got involved in high school things. Like, every single activity. Like, I was... The school mascot. I was on the student Wait, government. What was the mascot? It was a cougar, so I had a big tail, and <laughs> it was super fun. Um, so yeah, I did that. I was on a comedy team. I was on like every community service org you could do. I had a job. Oh my gosh! And so I've always kept myself so busy. But yeah. um, I was like, okay, maybe I should like really invest in school and make sure I get a good like college education and. You know, and I can always come back to dance, which, like, I have. And dance has yeah. never also left my life. Okay. Um, it just, like, I'd say, like, junior and senior year of high school, it was more, like, kind of like what I'm dancing now. Like, I was probably taking, like, three classes a week um, where it was, like, from ages, like, 6 to 15. It was almost, like, a full-time job. I was taking probably nearly 40 hours a week of dance. Wow. So going back to when you were young, young, yeah. little, when you first started, um. Because you are a guy, mm-hmm. and it is a little more rare for guys yeah. to get, especially to get started in dance that young. Yeah. What, how did that end up happening? How did you end up getting into it at six? Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, that's very young. Every time I talk to another uh, guy dancer, it's usually later in life. I think maybe it's becoming more common now to start okay. earlier, but I think back then it was very rare. Um, I think if guys got into it, it's probably more common in like teens early teens maybe but yeah six years old was definitely young um but basically in first grade um these uh this group of girls really wanted me to do the talent show with them um (laughs) and they were like begging me and well they had their moms call my mom and i was i was the shyest little boy ever really like i was um any social situation i hid behind my mom's leg oh my god (laughs) and so but i'm also extremely stubborn still am and i remember my mom like telling me oh they called and they want you to do this and i told them you were way too shy that you would never do it and that you know super it would be super fun but you know he's too shy and even as a six-year-old i was like don't say no i don't you can't tell me no like i was like i'm gonna do it like no i'm doing it and so and you know back then i was doing soccer and baseball and i then got into it and we started um taking dance class for this first grade talent show Wait, you t- you had a they were like we want you to do the talent show with us and you need to take dance class mm-hmm. to do we it. want you to do the dance is it because they were all went to some dance class and they like... all went to a dance studio okay yeah and That's they wanted so me funny. to be there. yeah and so then, yeah, I started taking dance. And, and that was, you grew up in Orange County, right? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And um, do you remember what the talent show dance was? Yeah, it was to um, that song. I think it's uh, My Girlfriend by NSYNC. If you were my girlfriend, girlfriend. I'd treat you. Yeah, I don't exactly. Even know. No, no, but that's it, though. That's it. <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's cute. Yeah. Do you have a video? I don't know. I mean, back then it was, uh, I don't know, well, even if I did have the VHS, I don't even think that I have somewhere to play it anymore. Oh my gosh, that's super cute. We're, and so were you the only guy in Yeah, it, it was just me and the four girls. Did they like make you the star of that? Yeah, of course. And it was great. And so, but I loved it and it was really fun. Um, and I just like fell in love with it. I tried to keep doing soccer and baseball along with it. I didn't like soccer. It okay. was not for me. I, I did actually enjoy baseball. Okay. Um, but I really... Like, dance is what really made me happy. Um, And so I just invested a lot more of my time in that. And I was lucky to obviously have parents that supported that, you know? I think there's some parents that wouldn't have supported their boy getting into dance. um, Or just dance, especially, like, that age. And, like, where I eventually got to competitively. It's very time-consuming, very expensive. I'm sure my parents would be living a much better life if they didn't pay for my (laughs) dance as a kid. Um, but yeah. And so I guess from there, um, I just, after that talent show was done, I just was like, well, I got to keep going. You just kept going to that studio. I kept going what to that studio. What was the studio? Does it still exist? Um, no, it doesn't. It was called Cutting Edge. And I think there's another studio in Orange County area called Cutting Edge, but it's a very different one. Okay. This was like a 20 person studio. We okay. basically are, the, it was a single studio, like one room studio, basically in like the second floor of like a gym. Nice. So it was very small. Um, <laughs> and but when you great. were that, when you were that little, how do you remember like how many times you went to the studio in the week? I mean, maybe a couple times a week. Okay, I'm like, how um, like kids that train that little, like how much are they training? I'm just like, no, curious. I mean, uh, I don't remember that. I don't. At least for that one dance, it wasn't too much. Yeah. Um, but the next year, I started competing. Okay. The um, very next, when you were seven? Mm-hmm. Or, whoa. Yeah, and so I had a duet, a trio, a production number, wow. and I think, like, a small group. So I was already doing, like, four dances, like, that next year competing. Wow. And, yeah, it was not good. You, I, I was not good at that point, but I loved it. I had good energy. They obviously, I'm sure, I feel like when there's, like, a guy who wants to dance, yeah. teachers and choreographers are probably just, like, all on that. Like, yeah. we're putting you in all these things. I think and... that young. Well, I mean, and that was just kind of the ease into it. And then, like, the next year, I was still at that studio, and I was probably in, like, seven dances. And probably at this first wow. time, I was only doing jazz, maybe hip-hop, but I don't know if you could really consider it hip-hop. It was really just jazz. And then that next year, I got really into salsa. They oh, brought nice. salsa to the studio. So really, I'd say that my start in dance was jazz and salsa. Oh. Which I think is also, like, a little bit more rare. Yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't, like, I didn't get into lyrical until, like, 10 or 11, maybe. Um, and ballet, I mean, I think I took a ballet class here and there when I was, like, 7 or 8. But it was probably, like, 9 or 10 when I actually started taking ballet. Um, okay, but going back to salsa. So yeah. you did... So you did salsa competitions? I did. With, like, partners and stuff? Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, not not tons. But, well, we did bring a salsa dance to, like, kind of the standard competition circuit. Um, but then I did do a couple salsa competitions um, as a kid as well. Super fun. That's so fun. Yeah. I love watching people do that style, like, when they're good at it. Yeah. No, <laughs> it was so fun. And it was kind of like this salsa hip-hop fusion style that okay. this guy created. Um, and it was... Yeah, I'm so happy. Honestly, I feel like that kind of set me up for dance. Like, it really taught me how to, like, move my body at a very young age because salsa is, like, all about the hips and all of that. And so I feel like that helped me with, like, isolations and things like that that I still use today. Yeah, I feel like now it's all coming together, some of your choreographed moves and, like, the moves that are really hard for me because I did not (laughs) grow up doing salsa. (laughs) Or anytime you or Melissa do any sort of Latinese style, I'm like, Okay, here we go. Like it's good. Like, it's the how challenge. How do I roll this? How do I do? This? You're getting it. You're getting it though. I'm slowly but surely, but um, that's so interesting. So then you said, okay, so you just kept going. Did you actually keep dancing with some of those same girls for like a lot of years, or did that kind of change around? One of them for a while. Okay. Yeah. So the one um became my like dance partner, okay. I guess. Um, we did like my first duet to the song "Last Dance." 
by mm-hmm. Donna Summer, you yeah. know, fantastic. Um, and then she was ended up being my prom date. Oh, and, cute. and I asked her to prom by like recreating that because it was cute. like our last high school dance. So I was like, well, you uh, go to my last dance with me. That's Anyways, super cute. other story. But um, <laughs> yeah, so we stayed dancing for like a while together and went to different studios together. Okay. Um, and that's also because like we stayed like living near each other, went to the same like high schools and all the other uh, kids went to different schools and things like that. So we stayed pretty consistent um, for a bit. Nice. Is she yeah. still dancing today? No, she's not. No, she, I wish she was, but no, she lives uh, in Dallas and is a fantastic nurse, but not, not dancing anymore. <laughs> I'm sure she like dances around the office sometimes. You have probably. to, right? <laughs> yeah. If she's doing surgery, just dancing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I mean, they're out, so they don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, okay. So then what, um, your parents, you said they were supportive, so the whole time they were always just, like, cheering you on. Did you ever oh, have yeah. to, like, beg them to do things because everything cost so much money? Or were they just always, like, super encouraging, super supportive, no, paid for were... everything, <clears throat> anything you wanted? No, they really were super supportive. I mean, like, there were times when I wanted to go to different studios, um, but they were always supportive. Like, I was – so I was living in southern Orange County, and that first studio was, like, within the same city that I lived in. Then I went to I, I I've been to some studios. I will admit I'm I was a studio hopper. Ooh. Yeah. I was a studio <laughs> hopper. So I mean I'm a studio hopper currently. So each I one can't judge. <laughs> Yeah. But they each one had a purpose in my life for sure. So after that first one, I started taking classes at one that was like a little bit further away in Costa Mesa, which is a little bit more north Orange County, maybe central. And that's uh, Jimmy DeFore. And that's when I really started getting like I would say like solid training. Okay. You know, like really like really quality teachers, like getting more exposure to different teachers um, and like really started taking like hip hop, jazz, ballet, like tap and wanted to get like more, you know, well-rounded. And that was just one year and I took a break from competing that one year. Um, And that was kind of like because my first studio was kind of like fading out, Um, like they weren't really staying together and people were moving to different places. And then um, after that, I went to the studio called dance precisions um which is where i'd say like my really strong training like that's where it really started and so i was competing there from like 10 to 12 i'd say i did a couple years there and that was all the way in placentia um which is near anaheim and so that was like a 45 minute drive and And i was probably doing going there five days a week wow and we had a carpool but i was there from like 3 p.m to 9 p.m. every day. Whoa. So when did you do your homework? The drives. Really? The drives. And then, like, (laughs) let's say I had class from, like, 3 to 6, and then I had a break from 6 to 6.30. You know, I always got packed a dinner, did my homework. You know, I mean, I was there for so long that, like, I was bound to have, like, a 30-minute break, and so that's when I could get my homework done. Like, but drives there, drives back. Like, it was... You have to like it. I, I to did, yeah. To do all of that, yeah. But it so and you have siblings, right? Or I a do. sibling? I have a brother. Yeah. And did he? Did he do any dance? No, he's always been. He was baseball for a while, and then volleyball. So and basketball. Yeah, he did a lot of sports. If your parents or one of your parents was always driving you to this stuff, yeah. Then was the other parent with your? Yeah, pretty brother. much. I mean, I would say like at least for that studio that was like forty five minutes away, there was a carpool. You know, so okay. other kids that were, like, from my area would, like, we would meet up. And so parents would take turns. Um, but, yeah, my mom was pretty consistently with me. I mean, and at that studio, we probably went to, like, 12 competitions a year. And so I was just, my mom was driving me around Southern California constantly for dance wow. competitions. and then 12 competitions a year. That one year we did three different nationals in Vegas. So basically my mom and I lived for a full month in Las Vegas. Whoa. Which was crazy. <laughs> which was crazy. Like literally young crazy. Too. That's yeah. so funny. And like my brother and dad would come to like visit us in Vegas because we were there for so long. <laughs> Wow, that's so cute, though. I feel like, I mean, you probably got really close with your mom. I mean, you probably, yeah. it sounds like you've always been yeah, close with your mom. Yeah, super close with my mom. But, yeah. yeah, whole family is so supportive. I mean, everyone in my family, like, loves dance. Like, no one else was a dancer. I think my grandparents were dancers, but, like, socially, you know. Um, but everyone 
love stamps in my family. Like I even for my brother's wedding, I choreographed like a salsa dance for a pre-dance, like a pre-cocktail hour dance Cute. for them. And then they actually had their first dance. So like everyone's invested in dance wow. in my family. Wow, that's so cool. I love that. Um, so then how did you – oh, and with all the competitions, but they were all in California. You didn't like travel like – fly anywhere or anything no vegas was the farthest okay. i ever went yeah it was i mean because california does have such a big dance market you yeah. know that like i never had to travel yeah. you know like yeah i'd say there was a lot in palm springs a lot in like vegas is probably the furthest that i went okay yeah and did you have friends were all your friends dance friends yeah i mean pretty much like i mean i had good friends in school but most of my friends were dance friends. Like, when I think back to, like, my birthday parties as a kid, it was, like, maybe two school friends, and then, like, the rest were all dance friends. Yeah. Um, Which was, like, kind of interesting, I think, as, like, a young kid, because I did go to, like, studios that were far away. And so, like, my friends were far away. Like, a lot of my best friends lived, like, 45 minutes away, which I don't think is, like, as common for a kid normally it's like oh they're all within the right. neighborhood right and it was oh i want to go see this person i mean luckily we were at dance all the time but like yeah it would be like mom can you drive me 45 minutes so i can go spend the day with this person yeah. you know it's like a 12 year old yeah so but yeah dance dance creates like some amazing friendships yeah yeah for sure i mean it's doing that for me today as an adult so yeah. Um, okay, so then what actually got you into ballet in high school? Did someone start mm. to say that you needed it, or did you just start to want <laughs> to do it? No, I mean, well, yeah, kind of all of that. <laughs> um, I would say, so it was um, at my, so after Dance Precisions, I went to a studio called West Coast. Okay. And they were, I'd say, a bit more ballet focused, a bit more technical. And I had this one ballet teacher. Her name was Rebecca, or is, actually she's married. I don't know her new last name. Rebecca Thompson at the time, though. And she really put in some, like, energy to me. Uh, and she just saw that, like, I had a passion for dance. And so she really made sure that, like, she gave me attention, especially when it came to ballet, so I could really improve. Um, and so she, like, introduced me to the ballet world. Like, she took me to my first Nutcracker. And that was awesome. And I was just like, oh, my God, these dancers are amazing. Um, and so then we always just stayed, like, even once I left that studio – and went and tried to get a little bit more into the dance industry at 14. Um, then she was the one that actually like called me and said that there was an opportunity to be a part of a Nutcracker oh, cool. with the Festival Ballet Theater. And I had to audition for it. But so I got this role of Fritz when I was oh, like 14. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Um, uh, with the Festival Ballet Theater. And they do it with like ABT dancers and all of that stuff. So it was wow, that's really cool. very fun. Um, and I got to work with some amazing uh, like ballet instructors and so that's what really got me there and so then once I did the Nutcracker I was like and I did like maybe 40 shows just that one year of the Nutcracker Whoa, we did a lot that's crazy yeah I'm, did you ever get did you ever, did you ever get like I never I know you never really got sick of dance I don't think but like did you ever get bored of like doing the same dance like 40 times that one is you know I think it was just because it was like so like go 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 we had like a matinee we had a night you know um I don't, maybe by the end of it, I don't remember too well, um, but I always tried to, like, change some things up, you know? Like, if I got to do, like, a trick or a turn, I would maybe try, like, a different turn one night, you know? It's like, I was 14 or 15, and so, you know, I had some, like, thought of, like, oh, this would be cool, right? Like, I mean, I was obviously supposed to, like, stick to some specific stuff, but, like, I did have some slight freedom in certain sections. But, you know, Fritz is, like, a great part, but it's really only in that first half That's of true. it. That's true, yeah, so, okay. Um, wow. And you got paid for that? I got, well, so that's kind of it. I got paid in, like, dance money. So, basically, I was just, like, given, like, all of these privates. And so that's why oh, nice. I was into doing so much ballet because like well you have all this money to the studio yeah um and so and i'm sure that was fine i don't know now that i'm thinking about it, I was like, i'm like that's a lot of shows to yeah. like not get actual money but i was but... like but to be fair like at that age it would have probably gone to dance yeah. anyways right yeah. so it made sense so i got a lot of dance privates and um yeah I loved it. Wow. And so your did your love for ballet just grow through all the privates and doing well, the show? Well, it did, and then it hit a turn, and I can't even say what 
made that turn happen. But then like, as soon as like, I was really like training and I was like gonna get ready for like YGP and all of that stuff. Youth American Grand Prix, it's like a big ballet competition oh, basically. Oh, nice, um, okay. I hope that's right. I don't know. It's been a while since I've thought about that, but (laughs) I'm I'm pretty sure it is. Um, And so I was getting really into that, you know, and so I was working on my ballet. And then I think just like one day I was like, "Mm, I don't want to do this anymore. Like I want to focus on school. I want to get more involved. I want to have more school friends, things like that. Um, And so then I just kind of faded out of that a bit, um, which. Towards the end of high school. Like mid high school. Okay. Yeah. Like junior and senior year, I really was not dancing that much. I was dancing because I was the mascot, so I was, like, taking class with, like, the song girls and the dance Uh, team, and then I took, like, two or three classes, Um, but I wasn't dancing too much at the end of high school, and, like, I truly kind of regret that now. Yeah? Like, I wish I was dancing more then. I mean, I do love, like, where, how everything has ended up, but I always do think about, like, what if I stayed those extra two years and continued to compete and do all of that? Like, oh, I wonder where my life would be. Like, that's yeah. something that I do think about. Yeah. I don't know if I necessarily regret, but it's definitely something I think about. Yeah. I mean, your life seems to be in a pretty good place. So it yeah. seems like it worked <laughs> out. But um, but then now, did you dance in college? Yeah, I was a dance minor. Um, okay. I went to USC. Okay. And then I also was a part of a contemporary dance company, and I was one of the directors of the company for, uh, like, two years. Nice. That was with USC or outside of USC? With USC. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was called Expressions oh, cool. Dance Company. Wow. So you were a director. What did that mean? You Did you make up choreography? I did choreograph for it, but then, it, I mean, really, the directors were like, well, we all choreographed, like, the company number, but it really... That was mainly just being kind of the admin person, right? So um, scheduling our performances, making sure that everyone was learning their dances, organizing the auditions, um, organizing just kind of like every little detail. And then like gauging the people, right? Making sure that people felt a part of the community. And did you like get paid for that or did you just volunteer no, that to was do a, that? Yeah, that was volunteer. Zach, why are you like a perfect person? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's that's just like a school organization, you you're know, like, when you're like, did this, I'm president of the I... community service club. I was just like, I was director of a dance company, you know, it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it does. It, obviously it gives you experience and like, yeah, and I'm sure you enjoyed it to a degree and everything. Yeah, for but, sure. Um, still, it's like, wow, you just did so much out of your yeah. Servant heart. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So after high school, were you just like, oh, I want to get, I miss dance now because you didn't do kind it for like of, two years. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I really was like, well, I do want to be a dance minor, right? Like I wanted more dance in my life for sure. Um, and then, yeah, I just got to a point in college where I was like, I need this back in my life. Like I haven't done it in so long that I really needed it back. And then I was doing a lot of dances through expression. So I got it like back full force into my life, which was so needed. Um, Because like, go ahead. I was just going to say like, just because like it never like left my life, but like it definitely like faded. And so once I got it back, I was like, oh yeah, I was missing this. Like Mm. it keeps me so grounded. Cause you, did you, what year of college did you get into it? Was it freshman year or after that? No, it was, oh, maybe it, I think it was sophomore year. Okay. Yeah, I think I had a year of, like, I mean, I was taking, like, dance classes, and then I was kind of, like, figuring out what I wanted to do in college, you know, like, what communities I wanted to be a part of, and then I, like, kept on seeing things about this dance company, and I was like, okay, I need to get in this. So, yeah, I was um, sophomore year, because in the f- freshman year, I, like, rushed to fraternity and all that stuff, okay. and so I just didn't have a lot of time. Um. Did you guys do competitions with expressions or no? no? Just, just performances. performances. Yeah. Okay. And it was one performance a semester. Okay. So we were all like basically the whole semester. It was just teaching the dances, learning the dances and building up to your end of semester um, performance. Okay. And how much like rehearsal or practice did you guys do? Well, so it was very much dependent on how many dances you wanted to be in. Um, so I think like one year I was maybe in like four and then another year I was in like eight like I was it switched so I was in a lot um but really as a company we only had a like one two-hour class oh okay um every week but then rehearsals for each specific piece that you were in right and did different people in the company choreograph the different yeah. pieces so yeah everyone so basically got an whoever wanted to choreograph could that's so cool and then you like presented like a piece of it at like a showcase and then people saw what they 
wanted to audition for and then we had auditions for all the dances and then the choreographers like picked who they wanted in each piece nice that's so cool were when what was the first time that you choreographed something did you do that as a kid or did you not do that till, yeah like, college, I think or? I was always kind of choreographing things as like a kid but you know I'd say like in high school, I for sure. Well, actually, no, I was choreographing my own solos. Like, I would always do, like, the school talent show. Um, and I was doing my own solos at, uh, yeah, probably in middle school. Or, like, even I was in musical theater in middle school through, like, my middle school. And um, I would choreograph the dances for all of that. Really? Yeah. because the, For everybody. Like, the, yeah. The, the teachers were, were good theater people, but not necessarily great like dance so like Zach, and then do this but also a lot of times it'd be like okay everyone do this stuff and then zach come to the front and do something else <laughs> wow that's amazing i like that's so cool i i'm not surprised to know that chore choreographing came so natural to you and that yeah you did that when you were so young because literally the how quickly you make up choreography like new choreography every week and just like have it so good like, yeah i'm like how does Zach have this amazing talent? I mean, it is an amazing talent, but you've al you. also been doing it for like so I have. long. Yeah, and so. even I think pr before you were you started taking my class, I used to do um, a different combo every week. Oh, really? Yeah, I think like pre-pandemic, I was doing okay. a different. I think as soon as we came back from COVID, I went to two um, what two weeks. Okay. Um, but before that, I was doing a different one every single week. And what did you go to one every two weeks to kind of pace yourself? I think to pace myself, I also found, like, you just kind of want two weeks of yeah. it. Like, you kind of, like, do. yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, there is something fun to getting something new every single time, but to have the ability to be like, okay, I actually worked on this. Let me, let me see it and, like, get it in your body, you know? There's, there's a benefit to that. You're like, okay, now I actually feel comfortable. Let me just, like, throw in those nuances more, yeah. you know? That's what you can do the second time. So, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It was one to, help me with my schedule <laughs> to just to really <laughs> make sure everyone. people are getting it um okay so then okay i'm getting kind of cold are you oh yeah yeah okay i'm gonna turn this off that's bit. fine um then after college did you dance did you get go straight into like a job or what what happened then yeah so i mean i was i did like grad school and like i got my master's and my doctorate okay. and so i finished expressions like it was only an undergrad okay. company so I didn't do it then but that is when I started to go to um well what was it called back then it was called YNS your neighborhood yeah. studio and then it became dance line yeah and then that shut down and now we're all here at the yeah. c-spot um but yeah right when that like as soon as I finished undergrad I had a friend from expressions um start taking it um YNS and so she told me about it and I was so nervous to get back into dance, even though it had been like three, three months. Or, no, oh. no, this is like out of college. Like out of college. Oh, it's out of grad, out of undergrad. So it was. Yeah, so this was, was during like grad months. school. <laughs> yeah, it was probably like three or four months. Maybe it was like five, and I was like, oh god, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, like I've only been dancing since I was five years old, exactly. and I didn't dance for three months. I might have forgotten. Everything. It feels that way sometimes. <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm getting old, and then I was like, okay, and so and it was just uh, Melissa's class. Okay. And so I started doing Melissa's class just like regularly. And then there was this amazing Broadway class that I love to take. With Tor. Tor. Yeah. Did you take it? No, but I just hear about him all the time. Tor is one of the most amazing people I've ever met. Um, <laughs> we if, need to get him back here because yeah. the amount of people that are like, oh, Tor's class. We wish we had Tor's class still. Tor's class was phenomenal. It was so fun. He was such an engaging teacher. Like every time you were just like, wow, this is amazing. And I always got so nervous. He always asked me to sub for him and I always got so nervous. I'm like... I could never live up to this. I couldn't because he just created such a fun environment. Um, what but, what did he do like specifically? I think it's just Tor. It's just his energy. <laughs> he's amazing. Um, there's just something about him, and now I think he's killing it as a director in Chicago. But um, he's yeah, he's just there's something about his energy that he always just created an amazing class. Yeah, and so that's kind of where I started. I just took. Uh, Melissa's and Tor's class, and then I started to phase in Christian's class, and then Christian left, and my friend Caroline, who went to USC and was on Expressions with me, who was the one that brought me over to YNS, took over his class. Oh, okay. And then I would sub for her. Oh, okay. And then I took oh, over her class. 
Everybody's stories are intertwining because now I know. Because, yeah, Christian went, oh, he went to Utah. Utah. Mm -hmm. And so Caroline took his class when he went to Utah. Yeah. And then then Caroline moved. He got a different day. Yeah, he got a different day. And then Caroline, I don't think she moved. I think she just, like, was getting too busy. And so she stopped. And so I took her class. Oh. And now she lives in New York. So she did eventually move. But I think for a while, I took her class because I was subbing for it so much. I see. Okay. Did she do dance in New York? No? She, like, not professionally, but she does take class okay, out okay. there. Okay, Yeah. And when you graduated and, like, wanted to do dance again, like, or even after you were 14 and did, like, the Nutcracker, did you ever go on, like, auditions to for paid dance stuff? Or was that never really anything that was super on your radar? It was just, like... I did, like, minimal, you know? Like, I remember I auditioned for, like... Maybe one or two TV shows, but I never got an agent. Okay. Um, they were just like open call auditions. Okay. I mean, when I was seven, I auditioned for like Most Talented Kid in America or whatever that show was. <laughs> we did not make it past the auditions, which is fine. Um, but that was fun. So we, I've done like those auditions. I, I auditioned for one like dance show that was on Nickelodeon. I think something else. I've done a few performances, like definitely like performed at Disneyland. I performed... At, like, different, like, the House of Blues in Hollywood, the ha- nice. like, Avalon. Like, there's this one joke where, well, it's a joke to me. But so there was um, this benefit performance. It was called Kids Helping Kids Project Haiti. Okay. And so all that stuff yeah, was going yeah. on in Haiti. And it was, like, sponsored by, like, I think primarily Nickelodeon. Like, if you, like, the, like, Freddie Benson from iCarly mm-hmm. was, like, the host of the show. Okay. And, like... Ariana Grande performed, but, Whoa. like, this was before she was, like, yeah, yeah. big. And, like, I remember my group was performing, and then, like, she was on next, or maybe we were on after her or something, but, like, she, like, we were on stage at the same time, so I was like, oh, I danced fine, Ariana Grande, <laughs> which is absolutely not true, very not true, don't hold me to that, but it was just, like, the joke of wow. her being on stage and us transitioning at the same time, Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, we were dancing on stage together. That's so but cool, though. not actually true. But, oh, yeah. my gosh. But did you ever, like, want to get an agent? Or you Yeah. No, care? I did. I really did. I think freshman year, I went to a studio that was specifically, like, to get into the dance industry. It's called The Rage. Okay. And it's, like, deep in the valley here. Okay. And, again, I was living in Southern Orange County. So, like, wow. that, that shows yeah. my parents' dedication, again, that they would drive me, like, almost two hours. Wow. Um, because this one studio, well, uh, was doing so many amazing things, like, the year before I joined, right? Um, they were on like, so you think you can dance? Like it was the Rage Boys crew and all that stuff. And the year I went, you know, it didn't have the same opportunities. It was amazing, still of an experience. Um, I met some great people there. Um, but then during that is when I transitioned more to ballet. So you know, everything had a different okay. kind of experience to it and reason why I did it. But that year was when I was like, okay, maybe I will get more into the industry. Yeah. Um, and then it just didn't happen the way that I. Th- thought it would but I, I i mean i probably could have tried harder for it you know but like i don't know but so that is something that i did think about but didn't ever go like that hard into it yeah. you know um but then after you graduated you were you content to just like find a studio that you liked class the classes or oh did yeah you feel like you wanted to do like more stuff no i was really just i mean i always get like an urge to be like should i should I just really go commit to dance, like, hardcore? Like, I was like, I got my degrees now. Like, I've, I have tons of job experience. Should I just, like, take a break? I was like, while I'm still, like, kind of young, you know, ish. I don't feel young, but I'm, like, I still kind of am. <laughs> but um, I was like, should I try it now? Um, but I don't know, you know? Yeah. Um, I have had the thought. But, no, it's it's never been, like, my number one priority. Yeah. Um, I was so happy to find this studio nearby, though, because... I mean, as you know, every studio that you hear about or that you see is like, right, Studio City, North Hollywood, Sherman, like that area. And I live over here in Culver City. And so, which is not like, okay, not the craziest drive, but honestly... A night in L.A., that's a pretty crazy well, drive. Well, you're a little different than you were as a kid when you were like, I want to drive Oh, I know, exactly. I want to be as far as possible. Now you're like, um, I'll just stay in my community. Yeah, now that I'm doing my own driving. Um, <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't going to say it, but not, no, exactly. now that mom's not driving Now that mom's not driving me. <laughs> you yeah. your carpools. Exactly. So, 
I, I, I was so happy to find this studio. Yeah. Did you ever, like, try any of the other studios? Or were you just like, eh, I'm well, content? Well, I mean, like, as a kid, I would, again, my mom would drive me up to the edge, like, a yeah. lot. Like, I would go take classes, like, from, like, Marguerite Derricks, who... One of oh, my wow, favorite nice. teachers I have ever taken from in my yeah. life. Um, but, like, if she was teaching up here, or, like, um, there's a teacher, Mark Miesmer, who would, like, teach in Orange County a lot, but he would also teach up here, and I would, like, love to go take from him. Um, and so I loved going to the edge. I, I thought that, like, I would probably go take classes there, and then obviously it shut down. Mm-hmm. Um, and I took classes at Millennium as a kid as well. Um Again, I would go up there for classes, master classes for sure. Um, and I would go. Like, I mean, when did we... I just went to Melissa's. I mean, honestly, that yeah. was probably a few months ago. I know. It seems like kind of recent, but yeah, maybe a few months ago or something. Yeah. Um, so I would do that again, honestly. I think, like, a weekend is easy. Um, but yeah, going on, like, a Thursday night to Millennium just is, like, that's a lot of traffic. That's a lot of driving. <laughs> it's kind of what I do, though, to come here. Oh, yeah, completely. Weeknights, but yeah. Um, I don't know. I love, I mean, I love C-Spot. And I yeah. loved, I loved your neighborhood studio. I mean, I yeah. used to take class there a really long time ago, but I just took, like, beginner. It was some sort of beginner hip hop or something. Oh, nice. I wasn't really into dance, like, yeah. regularly yet. Yeah. But I had just heard of it, and yeah. I just took, like, a hip hop class there pretty regularly. Because I'm sure you've talked about it, but that's been kind of a little bit more recent for you like super into dance right like yeah year or two five uh, years? four or five years four or five. i was okay. injured for a year so i didn't dance for a year but okay. i so probably four or five years total okay with, like not including the injury year but um that i actually started going like Consistent. a few times yeah. a week then four times a week then six times a week then ten times a week. yeah exactly because <laughs> i was like i like gotta morning catch up and with, night <laughs> i gotta catch up with all the zacks that started no. when they were five <laughs> um but before that i would just take class every once in a while and there was a little period of time when I had some extra money and I, that's when I would go to hip hop like once or twice a week, okay. but it was more of like a, I mean, it wasn't a grooves cause he would like teach a combo, right. but it was sort of a grooves esque type of class. Okay. Um, just because he would ha- teach us a combo and then we would do it to different songs. Oh like, yeah. I yeah. I've, ta- I've taken a class. Like, maybe I took that class. You too might've taken one. it. Yeah. yeah. So that was Wilson Williams. Okay. He, he mm-hmm. taught there and then he started, he started his own studio, LA dance fit. Oh, okay. So I think I kind of stopped dancing, stopped taking him right around the time he was starting that studio because I think I moved away and then came back. I don't know. It's all out of order now. Okay. But anyway, yeah, I did like your neighborhood studio. I used to live on the west side, so I loved being close to that. But I also drove to Edge, too, and just took class there once in a while in the beginning, too. But yeah, so, okay, so here we are. You... I feel like we're caught up to where you are currently. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, but we have a little bit of time, so um, I still want to know some other things. Like I, okay, you do make up different choreographies every two weeks, which I still think mm-hmm. is a lot. It's crazy that you did it every. You week want me before. to do the same dance for a month? <laughs> no, 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 no. I just mean like I don't actually want you to. I mean, although actually, I probably would get it really good by the last one. True. But um, I just think it's a lot to come up with. It is. And so I'm curious, especially when you have like all this other work that you do. Yeah. And working out and. Yeah. Running, all this yeah. stuff. So do you have like a regular time that you always make up choreography? Do you have a regular way that you do it? Or is it just kind of like you're inspired in the car when you hear a song or like? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, You know, I wish it was more regular, but it honestly doesn't like for a while. I was like pretty good about it always being like the Sunday before, you know, like Sunday's usually a rest day. So I'm like, OK, I'll just choreograph, you know, it's fine. But it does happen more often when it's like, okay, I found a song. That is honestly the hardest part for me, is the music. Not the actual, like, choreographing. It's finding a song that I like that uh, doesn't feel, like, maybe too overdone or, like, even just, like, I need to get inspired by it. And so that is honestly what takes me forever. Okay. So that's, like, if I'm waiting till the last minute to choreograph, it's because I just haven't landed on a song. So as long as you're inspired by the song, does the choreography just come out of you, like, really easily? Pretty much, you know? I, I think, like, sometimes I'll be like, I want to choreograph to this song, and then it doesn't happen as well. But typically, it's, yeah, it's like, once the song's there, because I've, like, gone through so much to find the song, it usually just starts kind of flowing. And I really just kind of pick a starting position, and then improv, and then just 
see, okay, I liked that. Let's keep going with that. So that's it's kind of what it is. I just land on, how do I want to start? Standing, sideways, whatever. And then, okay, let's see what happens from there. Okay, wow. And then once you have it together, you also just like remember it. Like, yeah. do you have to go over it yourself a bunch to remember it? Or is it just like, oh, I put it out there. It's in my head. I got it. No, it uh, kind of just in my head. But that's also why, like, the first time that we do it, I'm like, we'll figure it out together, right? Like, every single time, it's like, this is the first time we're all doing it full out. We're all figuring out, you know, that's what I say, like, every class. And so it's just, I, I do, do remember it, though. That, yeah. But I don't feel, I don't feel like you don't have it or like you it, don't. Good. Yeah. Well, that's the goal. <laughs> I don't want to feel like I'm not prepared because I am prepared. But no, I don't like, I don't record it. I used to record it. Okay. Where I would be like, okay, I'll let me. But then I realized I was actually never watching it. Yeah. Like I would record it because also I'm doing it in my living room and it'd be just like me marking it. I'm like, yeah. that doesn't tell me anything, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, well, I might as well know it. And if I want to tweak something while I'm doing it, then we'll tweak it, you yeah. know? But um, so no, I kind of just do it. And once I'm, the dance is done, I probably do it like two or three more times. And I'm like, okay, we'll see how it goes. Wow. I mean, so you've been teaching this class for how long now? I've been teaching, when I started at Wina, like 2018, so probably six okay. years. Wow. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. I love knowing how that started because, yeah, that was probably my biggest question in my head was like, how did Zach start teaching this class? Yeah. And then it's also crazy to me that you are such a good dancer. Like, even the way you were talking about, like, oh, you were worried because you didn't dance for three months. How was it going to be? Like, that's how... Like, just thinking about the fact that you, like, don't take a million dance classes. I mean, you take a, a few. Yeah, yeah, But just the fact that your turns are still so good. And I, I don't think you're, like, practicing them that every day. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> I wish I did, though. If I had more space, I would probably. I feel like it just must be just so ingrained in your body from, like, all the yeah, years of yeah. training. So many so years cool. of training. I just that, love that. Yeah. I'm, like, it makes me – I'm not jealous because it kind of, like, what you're saying, like, I'm – happy how my life is and if yeah. I had grown up dancing all the time maybe I would hate it like yeah. I don't know I mean I have a joy yeah. I have like a fresh joy for it because I didn't really experience mm -hmm. it maybe perhaps so like maybe. um I mean that's probably why I kind of had to take it back take like a put it in a back seat you know yeah. a little bit because I was like I'm doing this too much I need yeah. something else you know yeah so I don't know I think that happens with things but like I could not imagine not having it in my life yeah but like I the fact that you did get it so ingrained in your body that now you can just, I mean, not that you don't have to think at all, but it's no, like, I know what you mean, but you, yeah, you're more free to like really dance it. And like, that's my goal. It's like, I love class, but I don't want to, not that I don't want to work hard, but I just want to feel like, okay, I have it. Now feel, I can be free and really dance. Yeah. A little bit more just like naturally confident, yeah. like right at the start. Right. Which like my beginner classes in the beginning felt really hard. And then once I got better at them, eventually I was like, oh, I'm really dancing these now. Yeah. And now I've just been at this like intermediate type level. Well, it takes a while. For a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't grown so much since I've seen you start dancing. Like, so <laughs> go easy on yourself because you have made some crazy, amazing improvement. Oh, thank you, Zach. You no, know, I, I know that I have, um, but it's still like there's always something more. Just like I want to be even more free and like have the technique come more naturally just because I'm practicing it. But it's yeah. like, I find myself practicing it. And when I'm thinking about it, I'm doing it. Okay. And then when I'm dancing, I'm like, Oh, my foot was completely turned in. I don't know yeah. like where that came from, but yeah. <laughs> it's just like not ingrained in my body yeah. like that. Or like Melissa is always telling me to like, you know, step on the ball of my foot first or always point my feet. Or you right. tell me that too. And like, I know, but it's like not, that, that is, isn't ingrained in my body at yeah. all. <laughs> that is funny. Cause that's like the one thing that where I think like, I knew that dance was a little bit ingrained in my body where, like, any time I pull up my feet, it's pointed. It's like in real life. Like, you're yeah, just, like, no, basically, it's just like, honestly, like, I'll move my foot and it's pointed. You know, like, that is when I was like, okay, dance is like in me. Is that like literally my feet are pointed? At it. Like, it is, it takes so much more thought to like not point yeah, than to point. That's really funny. Okay, I want to get to that point in my life. Uh, <laughs> but um, also, what else was I going to ask you? Um, oh, yeah. So, right now, <clears throat> do you have. Do you have any, like, dance dreams still left in you? Like, not even necessarily, like, oh, to do a professional job or, but just, like, oh, would you want to choreograph for more of, like, a production situation mm. or, like, not that you haven't in the past a little yeah. bit, like, do no. you have, like, kind of dreams like that still or are you kind of like, no, I just kind of like how it is right now? No, I think I still, I think I have dreams like that. I, I mean, I definitely, I love performing. Yeah. And I haven't gotten to perform like, on a stage stage in probably, 
Well, it's probably like five or six. No, maybe seven years ago. Five, five to seven years ago. I can't remember okay. exactly. Which honestly, I think for some people, it's like, oh, that wasn't that far away. But like that feels like that was forever because I was doing it so consistently that I I love that feeling of being on a mm. stage with the lights, with the crowd. Like, I mean, I get so nervous, but I still love that feeling so much. So that's something that I would love to do again in any capacity. Yeah. So performing in something, you know, and I don't know what that would be. Maybe I'll start doing like um, an adult ballet and be like one of the parents in the Nutcracker or something. <laughs> That'd be cool. There are always those people around. Um, so I don't know. But yes, I would love just like, you know, not like any specific goal. I would love to have an opportunity to perform again. That's cool. Um, I'm just going to like milk this for because I have so many questions. We <laughs> yeah. still have like s- seven minutes. Yeah. I, I can't do the math of that. But um, what is your favorite thing? Okay, you said you like performing. So what's your yeah. favorite thing about teaching? And like, do you prefer teaching to performing? Or are they just totally different? They're just totally different categories. And you it, love them both. I, I think they're just different categories. Like they're different things, right? I think like teaching, I do it for others. Like I love working with people. Like I love having you guys in class. And like, I love all the questions. And I love just seeing also like the growth is amazing and so I love the community of that and I think the performing is more like that's like for me like I just yeah. like love that energy that rush um but I I love them both so I I like can't say one over the other like I love having this opportunity to have my creative outlet and to create and just like choreograph and then get to like share it with you guys and see how you guys react to it and there's definitely times where I'm like I don't think they like this one as much <laughs> or there's times that I'm like okay that was a good one and because also I know like my energy where I'm like oh I'm feeling that like we we're all feeding off each other you know so so that's really good but I like the like yeah just supportive community aspect of teaching yeah well if it encourages you at all I don't think I've ever not liked (laughs) one of your combos even if there's times that I maybe look like I'm not liking it (laughs) it's just because I'm like oh, this is challenging, <laughs> Like, but I want to be challenged, so I'm still not unhappy. Yeah. I just might be showing my frustration <laughs> no, by myself, okay. you know? <laughs> no, no. But um, I always love your combos. Like, certain ones sometimes just hit me a certain way where yeah. I'm like, this is well, so same. fun. Yeah, but I mean, like... I'm even choreographing them. I'm like, I don't like this one as much. And then, but sometimes I'll do it, like, week one, I'm like, I don't know. And then week two, I, like, make, like, a tweak. I'm like, oh, this feels just world better, you know? Okay. So I'm in the same boat. Yeah, yeah. But it's always so fun. So, okay, to kind of, to sort of wrap it up, what, Zach, what do you like to do besides, okay, I was going to ask you what you like to do besides dance. Okay, I know you run, <laughs> I know you work one. out, yeah. but, like, is there anything you like to do that's more of a relaxing thing that's not, like, something that's work, I guess? I feel like all these things are still working. They're all they're all relaxing to a degree, though. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I also, like, when I'm not doing things like that, I'm also just, like, on the couch, horizontal, you know? I love, I love, like, going to restaurants. I love trivia nights. Okay. Big trivia guy. Um, big wine guy. I love wine. So That's going right. like wine tasting, um, whether local or like in more of a wine destination. Um, What's your favorite kind of? I'm not a wine person, but I still want to know what's your favorite kind of wine. Um. Well, that's a that's a tough question. I mean, I do <laughs> love like, I mean, I do like like whites when they're when it's appropriate. I like a red when it's appropriate. I think like. Uh, I mean, specific, like, blend would be, like, a GSM, which is a Grenache Syrah, and I'm going to probably butcher the last grape, but Mouvedre, something like that, and that is, like, one of my favorite blends when it's done right, you know, and so that's, like, an easy go-to if that's on a menu. I'm like, okay, let's try that one. Okay. Um, So that's kind of, yeah, I mean, I love cooking. I love baking. Oh. Um, Yeah. What's, What's your favorite thing to bake? Uh, I've really gotten really good at, like, specific cookies. Um, and then I just baked mini banana breads. I just baked a crumble. I'm baking lemon bars this week. Uh, I don't even know how you have time to bake. (laughs) You just do it. You know, you almost, you just can't think about things and you're just like, okay, it's time now. You got to do it. Um, but yeah. So, I mean, I like to do a lot. I love to be social. I love to go outside, walk, um, hang out with friends, you know? Nice. It's all good. I that's I'm I'm inspired that you <laughs> do so much and then still have time for that. So that's amazing. Oh, and last question. Okay, then we'll be done. Um 
you've lived in California your whole life. Whole life. Do you feel like you will live here forever or do you ever do you ever dream about like living somewhere else? That is a common like question that I have for myself cuz I do think about it all the time. Like I've been really close to moving to Nashville a few times. Okay. Um almost... Why Nashville? I just love it. I, I, I went like there. Too. I went there because I was thinking about going to Vanderbilt for college. Okay. And then I went there again for my twenty first birthday. Okay. And then I've had a friend move there since college, and so then I go visit her every year. So now I've been there like six or seven times, and I just feel like I know the city very well. I like everything about it, you know. Like, so Nashville is the closest I've gotten to moving. And one time. I was going to say, I thought I had to move to San Francisco, and that's still in the state of California, but it's so different than here. <laughs> it is, yeah. I could never picture myself in San Francisco anymore. <laughs> um, so I think about this a lot. Um, I always think, like, I should probably leave California. and get, no, I'm not you saying know. you should. No, I do this to myself. <laughs> and I'm like, I would also love to live internationally, you know, but I'm like, realistically, I don't know if I will at this point, you know? I kind of want one of those jobs that's rem- – well, and then I have dance, so I, I mean – Couldn't do this, but in theory, I would love, like, a remote job to go live somewhere for, like, a month here, a month there. I don't know if I would actually take advantage of that if I really was remote. Um, But in theory, it sounds great. But I also am just, like, I'm at a point in my life where I'm, like, I feel like my life is here. I don't really want to switch it up unless there was, like, a really good reason to. Yeah. You know, I'm, like, my uh, brother is about to have his first baby, so I'm about to become an uncle, you know. And he still lives out here. And he lives in Orange County, and my parents are like, I mean, they would hate me saying this, but they're getting old, you know, and so (laughs) I'm like, I don't know if I want to leave them. Um, So I don't know. There's parts of me that will always be like, I should probably live somewhere else, but I'm also like, it's hard to beat California in a lot of ways, so what do I need to? I was going to, we can just say it, California is the best state. It's so. great. It's a great state. <laughs> I mean, coming from other places, I Because can't. you were Illinois? No. Yeah, Illinois. Yeah. I also lived in Indiana for a bit. I also lived in San Jose, so okay. I was up north for a while, but um, which is also good. But yeah, I really don't know why anyone would want to live anywhere else. So when I meet tough. people that grew up in California and still live here... I'm curious if they think they if they no, I've think they want to live somewhere else. They probably really don't, though. <laughs> yeah, I've thought about it, but you know, there's a lot of places like I could never really see myself in New York. Like yeah. that's just not like, and so many people go there, right? Yeah. I just don't think yeah. I could. Um, can't see myself in the Pacific Northwest. Again, I it's like Nashville. I maybe some, like the Carolinas, Austin, maybe I don't know, but I don't have any need to right now. Yeah. There's no opportunity right yeah. now, so. <laughs> I'm in California for yeah. for a while. If there's no real reason, and it seems like you have lots of great opportunities happening here, yeah. so uh, yeah, I think it's great. I think your life sounds amazing. Honestly, okay. well, <laughs> hopefully I didn't <laughs> try and make it sound like that. <laughs> no, you didn't. But I just think it's great. I think you have so many cool opportunities, and you just seem to like really just give everything your all, and that's really Thank cool because I think. Yeah, usually people that do it in one area are usually doing it in every area. So I yeah. think that's pretty cool just to have. Because then it just shows something about your character versus right. just like, oh, it's just because I love this thing. It's like, well, no, you kind of just give yourself to every opportunity that you feel I try supposed to. to take or whatever. So yeah. I love that. I admire that. So yeah, okay, well, we have to go to class shortly. So we are going to see you shortly yes. when we're really sweaty and yes. talking about Christian's class. So Absolutely. See you in a minute. Bye. Bye. Okay, hi everyone. I'm back with guest Zach Pinto, <laughs> contemporary slash jazz teacher at C Spot LA. <laughs> um, you're famous, I feel like. Um, we just took Christian's contemporary class Monday mm-hmm. nights at C Spot. We kind of talked about it a little bit already, but how did we feel about this particular class, this combo tonight? I don't even know the song we were dancing to. I don't either. Um, but uh, it was challenging. It was exactly what we we're talking about where yeah so many little intricate things that should not be hard but we're just like like just little yeah. movements where i was like okay oh uh, yep okay <laughs> and like yeah we honestly like there wasn't a lot of like big movements in this like we didn't travel a lot you know like yeah. it was like big arm moves but like in place but then everything else was like little intricate. ticks and intricate and the fact that like i didn't know i liked the song i just didn't know it yeah. and it was there was a lot of musicality that a lot of music i was like once he if he's not in front of me i don't think i'm gonna do it right there were a lot of like um <laughs> pauses and lingering like that was yeah. like always longer than what i thought it was yeah 
I definitely probably sped up a couple things and was guessing at a couple things. We'll see when I watch the video if I actually had the musicality. I'm really Same. not sure. <laughs> I feel like I did once. <laughs> I don't lately with Christian combos. This is kind of similar to your combos sometimes, but like I don't even know when it comes in at the beginning. <laughs> oh, that's my biggest thing that's for sure in my glasses. Usually yeah, your thing, but absolutely. Lately with Christians too. Yeah. I'm like, wait, we're coming well, in on the three, but was there a step on the two? That I wasn't it, sure. Yeah, it. I yeah, that's very true. I was like, I thought it was just three, and then there was often a step on the two, so I added the step on the two, but I don't think it was. An official step. An official step. It was like, sort of, you can do it if you want. Yeah. No, I Um, never know when I'm actually starting in my dances, so don't worry, you're not alone in that. I was going to ask Christian if there was a step on the two, then I was like, Tracy, Yeah, no questions tonight. Does it matter? Does it really matter? (laughs) Usually when I ask Christian about the beginning of it, he'll go, I thought we were going to just figure it out together. (laughs) So I was like, I'll just leave it. And you know what? I left it alone and I figured it out. Yeah. So, I Well, did you step or did you not step? Well, I figured out that it didn't matter it if didn't we stepped matter. or didn't step. Right. So sometimes I did and sometimes I didn't. Right. Mostly I just tried to get my arm up on the three. And to be honest, I never really heard the three. I just was like, it's when the <laughs> words start. And yeah. so sometimes it's good for me to be a little bit delayed because I tend to be ahead of the music. Yeah. So if I'm like a beat behind, sometimes it looks better. Sometimes I look better on round one of things I've noticed because I'm a little behind because I don't know it as well. Okay. And yeah. then the second week I know it better, but I don't want to forget and it. And then I'm like on top rushing. of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's I fair. I need like I really need like three rounds really, but I thought it was really fun. Super fun. Yeah. It's it's one of those things with Christians where I think it's really challenging, but by the end I'm like, okay, kind of I got it. Yeah. Mostly. Yeah. Even if I didn't get it perfect, I'm like proud of myself for like how much of it I got. Absolutely. And just like trying to do it smooth, even that one turn. It was like a lame duck type of thing. I don't know. Is that what with it's called? Leg? With the leg, but the leg was like the not. The bent knee. Yeah, yeah. The bent knee up. Yeah. I kept, like, bouncing on that, but then I finally did it smooth a few times. And nice. I was like, oh, good. Okay. Nice. That's good. <laughs> That's my biggest problem in Christians, I think, is, like, with some of his turns, I'm just, like, kind of, like, hobbling to keep them up on my yeah. foot. And yeah. so I try to do them. I'm trying to get them smoother, so I was proud of that. Nice. Um, But, yeah, Zach, I feel like I – okay, I want to <laughs> – I want to know – because we're just gonna we're just gonna extend this podcast longer, not much longer, because he has like three jobs he has to do tomorrow. So it's all good. Um, and work out or something. So yeah, all that. what, Zach? I want to know what dancers or dancer or dancers in- inspired you when you were younger. Okay. Um. Well, I mean, I'm always inspired by so many dancers. Like growing up, right? There were so many people that I wanted to dance exactly like like I mean so you think dance was around when I was a kid that I was super into that which is like still yeah. around right but yeah. it was like it Bigger. was so big yeah. like um Nick Lazarini the first winner then okay. Travis Wall and those people I was super inspired by that but I think my biggest dance inspiration was Gene Kelly because my mom was like in love with him you know grew up like watching all of his movies and so she basically raised me on his movies um like singing in the rain was yeah. always something that I just like fell in love with um in fact when I was um 10 years old I did this uh it was a dance competition nationals in Vegas but it was like they did like a big one every four years where you like competed for like a world title or something like that okay and so you had to if you like were selected for like the final round you had to recompete your solo you literally did like a runway walk and then you did a speech like it was wow. almost like almost was like a pageant and like, I I'm guess. Miss, I was say, like I'm Miss America kind of dance. yeah it kind of was but it was just like it was for like the title um like Mr. Star Power like for me it was like Mr. Junior Star Power um and so I had to do this speech um and in that speech it was all about like how I I in Singing in the Rain there's a part where it's like gotta dance and I I can't sing so I apologize for everyone's ears but he's like says like gotta dance right talking about that and so my whole speech was based on that and it was like as a 10 year old I'm like when my mom asked me to set the table I don't just set the table I shit the table and then like when I'm like at the grocery store I'm tapping down those aisles you know like I had this whole speech made but like throughout I'd say gotta dance and so that's always stuck with me that's really and then cute. to this day I got a tattoo on the back of my thigh I can't really not thigh calf but I can't really show it in this video <laughs> but it says gotta dance and it's in like the 
font of the singing in the rain cover that's cute um, and you got that tattoo when you were 10 yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no that that's recent but um yeah that's always stuck with me and i was really lucky in a class at usc where um his uh wife patricia ward kelly um he's obviously passed now but she's still alive and mm-hmm. she does a lot of great work um just in memory of him oh, cool. um, and so she came and talked to that and we got connected and it was really great to meet her and learn about his story uh directly from his wife wow that's so cool um, so he's definitely had like just a, probably the most lasting impact on my life as a dancer wow that's awesome um and last question do you have any do you have any advice for dan the the dance world that's watching this <laughs> yeah i do i mean i i think it's really just like always keep dance in your life right we may go through phases where we need to take breaks like I know that I've done that too but like there's something so special about dance that's unlike honestly in my mind like anything else in this world and obviously I'm biased and we're biased because we love dance so much but I think out of like any art form you know it just like it transcends like communication like it just transcends like so much it's like obviously you're working so hard physically but it's such like a creative outlet and it's also such like an emotional outlet and I know that's probably other forms of art for a lot of people but I just think that like dance is just something that like I don't know there's like dance is just like I mean dance is just movement so like in a way everyone's constantly dancing and it's just like the way that people move and so like I don't know if you ever do get burnt out on it you know like it's okay take your break but come back to it like never lose that and also never put too much pressure on it right and I know that's like hard to say for someone who's like 100% dances their career obviously Mm -hmm. that's going to create pressure but like it is just this form of beautiful expression and creativity that just like we should never let it lose its spark you know yeah yeah so I don't know if that was clear advice but like like I don't know it's just such an amazing thing that we're so privileged to be able to do that like we can't let it lose its spark yeah and I like your idea of just we're always dancing. Yeah. Because any type of movement. You're any type of movement and... is a, like any time, right? We walk in every dance. And so every day we're, we're dancing. I love that. Well, thank you, Zach. Thanks for your thank great you. advice. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for taking dance class with me that we always take anyways. Always. But... <laughs> um, and good luck with all your stuff tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah. Big day, but I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Like and comment and subscribe and follow and rate rate and give a review. All right. Give a review. (laughs) We'll talk to you next time. Bye. All right. Bye.